we are talking about the motif of resurrection and kingdom. Well, we could likewise say resurrection, coming of the Lord. But the reason this is so important is because so many people have, uh, have a, a, a misplaced idea, a misguided concept that when the Old Testament talked about the coming of the kingdom, it's talking exclusively about the day of Pentecost. It's just simply not true. I, I want to share with you something that I have gleaned over the years. Now, are there exceptions to this? I would say yes. But by and large, prophecies of the coming of the kingdom are not focused on the initiation i.e. the birth of the kingdom. Now again, there are some exceptions to that. But by and large, even the Old Testament prophecies and many, if not most, of the New Testament prophecies, when they talk about the coming of the kingdom, they are not focused on the birth of the kingdom at, at Pentecost or during the personal ministry of Jesus even. No, they're focused on consummation, the maturity, the glorification of the kingdom at the day of the Lord, the judgment, and the resurrection. And so this is very, very important to understand. Now, I want to share with you another one of those passages that tie together the coming of the Lord, the judgment, and the resurrection, and the kingdom. And yet, I'd be the first to admit, the word kingdom does not appear. You know, there's an absolutely horrible hermeneutic out there. It has been used by my debate opponents over and over and over again, and I'm absolutely astounded when I hear it. Joel McDermott used it. David Hester used it. John Welch used it. I, I'm, I'm telling you, over and over, my debate opponents have, have said, when I have exegeted a given passage demonstrating that it, that it is about the judgment of Jerusalem in A.D. 70, and my opponents would say, well, I don't see the words, oh, final resurrection in the text of Isaiah 24 and 25. Therefore, Isaiah is not talking about final resurrection. Uh, I don't see the words in flaming fire in Matthew 24, 29 to 31, Something, consider, uh, something similar to that argued by David Hester. Folks, once again, this is an absolutely horrible hermeneutic. Just because a given word, term, or phrase is not in a given text does not mean that text is not talking about a given subject, i.e. eschatology. Anyway, with that in front of us, Isaiah... 24 through 27, called the Little Apocalypse, is without a doubt a prediction of the resurrection. Isaiah 25, 1 to 8, resurrection. Isaiah 26, 19 through 21, resurrection. And that resurrection is emphatically and, in, and specifically called the time of Israel's salvation. Isaiah 25, Verse 9 and 10, in that day, what day? In which the Lord would destroy death, verse 8. In that day we will say, this is our God. We have waited for Him. This is our God. We will rejoice in His salvation. So there's no question whatsoever that the salvation of Israel is the time of the resurrection. Now watch this. In Isaiah 27, Israel's salvation. What is Israel's salvation? The time of the resurrection. Israel's salvation, i.e. the salvation of the remnant, would be at the time in which the corporate body would be destroyed, Isaiah 27, 9 and following, when the fortified city would be laid desolate, when the altar would be turned to chalk stone, when the people that the Lord had created would no longer have mercy, in that day, the Lord would gather together the remnant who were scattered abroad at the sounding of the great trumpet. Now, where would he gather them to? 
the kingdom. But who are these? They are those who are dying. They're the dead. So, at the time of Israel's salvation, which is the resurrection of Isaiah 25, 8 through 10, at the sounding of the great trumpet, God would gather the dead. Well, didn't Paul say, or doesn't Paul say, in 1 Corinthians 15, that the resurrection would be at the sounding of the last trumpet? We have more on the sounding of the trumpet as we continue in our study. But watch this. In Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. Now, I understand that my dispensational friends don't agree with this assessment. But by and large, in the amillennial and the postmillennial world, it is agreed that Matthew 24, 29 to 34 speak of Jesus' coming in A.D. 70. Watch this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, that's the events leading up to the fall of Jerusalem, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Well, this is the great and terrible day of the Lord of Joel chapter 2. Then the sign of the sun will... Uh, Son of Man will appear in heaven, then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now watch this. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather to gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Well, here is Jesus directly citing Isaiah 27. Isaiah 27 is the sounding of the great trumpet at the time of the resurrection. Oh, by the way, did you know that the Jewish rabbis unanimously, basically, applied Isaiah 27, 13 to the time of the resurrection? So here is Jesus quoting from an Old Testament prophecy that the Jewish rabbi said was a resurrection text, the gathering of the dead at the sounding of the great trumpet. When did Jesus say that that sounding of the great trumpet for the gathering of the dead, that gathering into the kingdom, when did he say it would be? Verse 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation will by no means pass away until all of these things are fulfilled. The salvation of Israel, the resurrection, the sounding of the great trumpet for the resurrection at the time when the fortified city would be destroyed, at the time the altar would be crushed, at the time that the people that God had created would no longer have mercy, and it would be in Jesus' generation. Now look, folks, unless you can dichotomize and divorce the sounding of the great trumpet of Matthew 24, 31 to 34, for the gathering of the dead, as predicted in Isaiah, unless you can divorce that from 1 Corinthians 15. Entrance into the kingdom at the time of the resurrection, at the sounding of the great trumpet, the last trumpet. Unless you can divorce those, this is unequivocal, undeniable proof that the resurrection was in A.D. 70. And we've got more concerning the kingdom and the resurrection. So we'll see you on the flip side.